Hello and welcome. Stick welders, arc welders, they generally start off at 100 plus euro. That's really for sort of DIY. The professional ones you're talking about several hundred. We're just going to do a bit of DIY and we found this on a well-known Chinese website for 39 euro delivered to the door. It's a ZX7 250. 250 means it's a 250 amp and you can see that it's actually quite small. So let's open it up, have a look at it, set it up and test it. Let's open it up. Well, we have the product certification card, user manual, gives you a little bit of information there. And let's take the end of the box. Go, oh, that's it out of the box. Now the box is small. This is even smaller. You can see a name on it which may mean something or nothing, it's just a name they want to pick up. Information underneath. I'm going to read that. And there's your little unit itself. Very, very basic. You have your positive, your negative. Your positive is for your electrode, your negative is for your ground and your earth. And then you have your current, which is your amps. And it adjusts from two or 20 to 250. Now it says here, it shows a little display panel. Not sure if that works or not. You leave your little light up here to show that you have power. Turn around on the back. You have a fan to keep it cool in operation, and you have your power switch, your on and off power switch. Now this model is a 220 volt, and it's three pin. Our three wire. Just take that off there. Now it's very important with these that they must have a ground. And if this, if your one comes with a two pin, just make sure you have a, you be, you can ground it. So what we need now is we need to put a plug on that, and then we can switch it on. Okay, we're now wired and make sure that you have your wires in the correct order. You have your earth and ground and you have your live and your neutral. As you turn it around and do it that way then you'll see the way it's supposed to go. Now I have used the 13 amp plug for domestic house use. So plug it in and then with the little power button on the back Switch it on. So we have the fan is running. It's telling me that it's 23 amps at the moment. So we can put it up. And it's now saying 256 at the 250 mark. Now it may or may not be accurate, but generally it's a guide. Switched it off there, it's a bit noisy. And power it down completely, remove it from any power source. So the next step now would be your cables. Now in the box, the box is very small and there is no cables in the box but you do have, they do supply connectors. So open that and we'll just put the connectors out. 
Put that to one side and let's see what we have here. So we have your we have our connectors here. That's supposed to go on there. And then you have your copper sleeve which holds the cable tight and then you can tighten it down with a little allen key that's supplied and then you have your rubber insulators and just having a look at this they should be slightly different they don't appear to be let's just test them here that goes in there that goes in there and the same with this one They're not different, they're actually both the same. Ideally it would have been a good idea to have them different so you can't mix them up. Now, cables. You're going to need a heavy cable and when you're pushing out ampage, what it does, it brings your voltage down and your amps up. So the lower the voltage, the higher the amps. That's generally the way it works. Now you can go out and you can purchase heavy duty cables or you can use jumper cables. Now it turns out that um, the jumper cables that I have here they will push ideally 12 to 24 volts and they can push out up to a cranking amp of in excess of four or five hundred amps which will be okay for the little welder. Now the reason I'm using these is because this one here snapped off, it snapped and it's no longer usable and they're plastic but the, and the cable looks good enough, it is a heavy duty cable and there's no damage to the cable that's another thing you want to make sure make sure there's no damage and the other good thing is they're red and black so you can identify between the positive and the negative ground so we'll just pull them apart and at the other end then there's two good connectors where so this one can be at the far end of the ground so you can connect that to your ground on the item that you're going to weld. The positive one, we can see if we can put an electrode or rod onto that and see if it works. So let's break these down and connect those plugs. and we'll just connect them in so again we know black is negative ground so just plug that in turn it as tight as you can 
same with the red which would be your positive and your free electrode turn it in and screw in and there you have it so we can uh, we can use these as again and you're going to weld a little bit of metal that will be your ground and air to connect and then that's for your electrode now whether it will handle the electrode or not we'll be able to find out shortly so the next thing is and again it wasn't in the box is you've no welding mask now you can again it's up to you you can use a some doubled up sunglasses or as many pairs as you can get onto your face because once you start welding the brightness can damage your eyes and it's called arc eye and it can actually burn your eyes so it is recommended you use something if you do have any um, dark glass very very dark glass use it but what I did was I found this we found this online costs about five or six euro um, about five quid five six dollars and it's auto darkening welding glasses and if you do wear glasses or spectacles you can actually fit these over so when the light hits they automatically go dark they don't look the most comfortable but if they do the job and stop your eyes getting damaged all the better now also when you're welding good idea to wear some kind of gloves it sometimes it sparks back and you don't want to burn your hands now I'm using ordinary leather gloves that are being if a spark or a tiny piece of molten metal hits it won't burn through ordinary gloves don't wear wool gloves whatever you do or linen or plastic or rubber because it'll just burn straight through if you happen to get a spark back now next step is to test it forgot to mention welding rods again not included in the box now got some welding rods again they, they cost about five six euro five quid five pound five dollars and they are 2.0 now 2.0 300 mil and it says here that you can work them at between 35 and 60 amps and they are two mil thick it says it will also allow a welding of mild steel between two and four millimeters so we're going to give that a go so here we have the welder set up now. There's the rod put into the jaws of the clamp. And I have two inches of mild steel box. Give it a good clean down so it can take a weld. Uh, mag using a magnet. Uh, gloves, mask, or a brush. Little hammer for chipping. So with the art clamp connected and the positive and electrode is ready let's switch on this and we'll set it to 60 uh, it says 62 but close enough and let's give it a go doesn't seem to be strong enough so we'll just go up a bit more We'll bring it up to 90.
Yeah, just look at that. And it does seem to work. You can see it there, it is actually throwing down the weld. Now, saying that those rods were good up to 60, I think it might be a bit either that or they will work at 60, but the, the little welder is 60, it seems to be 90 is better for it, other than 60. Again it could come down to the mild steel we're using, but that is very, that's only about a 4 millimeter, so it shouldn't affect it, but the weld it does work. You may have to judge it by how you lay it down, so you may have to bring it up, you may have to bring the ampage up. Now just to remind you, I'm running this from a 13 amp domestic socket, and it does indeed weld. Well, I hope you found this useful. If you did, give us a thumbs up, drop a comment if you like, follow, subscribe, and you'll find us on the usual social media platforms.